Hello and welcome to your third UDK tutorial and in this tutorial we're just going to be going over the viewport options. So let's just go ahead and go into my perspective viewport and you'll notice I just have a simple cube. I wasn't supposed to go in that setting yet. <laughs> but I have a simple cube as you can see by all of these viewports. Now the first viewport option we're going to look at is this one which is simply the viewport type. So at the moment it's on P for perspective. We click it, that changes to T for top. F for front and then S for side. Don't know why these are looking in the wrong place. There you go. So S for side. And then we can go all the way back to P for perspective. So we have that, which is the viewport type. Then we have it real time. Now, what this basically is, is without real time, let's just say I was going to move this cube and oh look I'm moving it in this viewport but why isn't it changing in my perspective side or front viewports well what I can do is if I tick real time on one or why not all of these then I can move this around and oh would you look at that it now shows it in real time while I'm moving it so I'll just try and put this back and don't worry I haven't actually shown you about translating shapes yet but that's just simply to demonstrate real time also with real time, if you have animations and things, they will play. So let's say you had an animation of the sea crashing against the shore. That wouldn't play usually in the editor unless you have real time enabled. In fact, what am I doing? All right, okay, yeah, that's all correct. So now we have our viewing options. So the first one is brush wireframe. And basically this shows a wireframe, which, as it kind of sounds, wireframe, is just really an outline of the shape so you can see like that the different sides so if I just move around I'm trying to get a nice view here there you go that'll do so that is a brush wireframe we can then change to our regular wireframe like that and what that does is that splits things up into polygons because when your computer tries to render things it doesn't just go, oh, let's just render a 3D cube then. And it just does it. What it does is it says, oh, okay, let's draw a triangle here, a triangle here, a triangle here, a square here, a triangle here, a triangle here, and a triangle here. That's what it does. Most things are really made out of triangles. Triangles are just amazing shapes. So that's what that does. It really actually gives you a feel for the structure of an object. So let's just then move on to our next one, which is unlit. This is the default one nothing special here really just regular unlit and next I did zoom out there for a reason just check I have my light here is lit now if you try this normally you will just get your object turned to black and that's because you probably don't have any lighting in your scene so you need to add a light to be able to obviously get this to work if you want a lit thing you need a light pretty obvious now once again I haven't shown you how to add lighting yet don't worry about it I've added one simply to show you so let shows you the object with basic lighting. Then we have detailed lighting, and this really shows you the nitty gritty of the lighting here. We can see, oh look, it's darker here and here and here, and it's darker here and here and here. So that's really useful. And then we have lighting only. Now, although this isn't a particularly great example, it basically gradients off. So we have kind of a regular here, and then it gradients off to go slightly darker over here because there's slightly less light over there. So that's pretty much those. I'm just going to go back to our regular unlit. So that's those. Uh, ignore these ones. I'm not going to go through them right now. We also have a game view and pretty much, in fact I can quote the definition on this one, enables game view mode which displays a more accurate preview of the game's graphics. So basically that will put on lighting and it does some of the effects that will happen with your game because of what UDK does to it. I've made that sound kind of really bad, as if they're breaking your game. But no, what I, what I mean is effects, basically preprocessor effects that just make your game look nice. So it does some of those, and if you have nodes and things, then it will remove those too. Uh, one disadvantage of this, though, is if I'm trying to move an object, I'll give this example again. Let's just go back and turn game mode off. Oh, if I try and move this object, oops then you'll see I have my little widget for moving it around here however if I have game mode on oh dear there's no widget 
what am I going to do? But once again, don't worry about actually trying to move it or translate it as it's called, because I haven't actually shown you how to do that yet. So game mode, don't worry about these ones. Uh, this one is pretty interesting. Camera movement speed. So at the moment, when I move around, I move around at a fairly decent speed. This is the speed I like to work at. If I click it again, it, oh god, that's fast. It's faster. Click it again. Oh my god, it's crazy fast. And then click it again, and oh, look, it's super slow. So I like having one click off the normal, like that. Which is a fairly decent pace. So you can customize that, obviously, to your own needs. Uh, another thing that's probably worth noting is this button here maximizes your viewport. So in this case, we have a big perspective viewport. And obviously, you can do you can do any of these with any of the viewports. So if I want to maximize my front viewport, I can do that. If I want to enable real time on my front viewport, I can do that. And I can obviously change these as well. So I can change this to lit, for example. And it shows us our lit texture on the front perspective. So that's pretty much all I wanted to show you in this lesson. This, Don't worry about the fact that you can't make shapes and you can't add lights and you can't translate shapes yet. This is all just to show you the basics of the perspective options because you really need those to move on any further. So that is the end of this video and have a nice day.